adding several recordings together. So far, I have been assuming that you are going to deliver your lecture or your recording in a single go and that you're going to be able to cut afterwards. But that is not necessarily the case. You can do small recordings that sequentially will add up and later on, if you want to, you can paste them together using Camtasia. So I am going to cover how to go about that process inside Camtasia. during the editing of your video and the things that we're going to learn how to place in the timeline are screen capture videos, regular digital videos, sounds, images, and later on we're going to spend some time understanding the tracks in the timeline and what are the track dimensions in the viewing area. For that I have started by creating a folder with different files that I would like to incorporate into a single video. As you can see from this folder, I have different types of files. I have a CamRec file, which is a Camtasia recording file. I have an MP4 file. I have an AIFF file, which is an audio file for Macintosh. I have a WAV file, which is an audio file for Windows. A project and media files image that you have seen in other parts of this tutorial and finally a hype cycle graphic from Wikimedia and the reason I am showing you all of these is for you not only to see the different types of files that I can integrate into a Camtasia editing session but also for you to look at the size of these files it is going to be very important to understand this size so please take a moment to try to memorize the different sizes for these. These are 102 megabytes, 46, 41, 41, and less than one megabyte. I am going to start by showing you the project and media files that we covered before. And this is to remind you that the files that are the heaviest, the biggest files are video files. After that, audio files are the second biggest ones, and then we have image files and things like that. This Camtasia project file for PC and this one for Mac will remain fairly small in comparison to our media files. However, these files are going to include all of the information of our editing session, and it is very important to keep it and to do frequent saves. So I'm going to close these. I'm going to open Camtasia and there it is and now I am going to import the files by in this occasion going to file import media and selecting the files that I just showed you. Camtasia automatically is going to separate these files depending on the type of file it is. So we're going to find first the CamRec, then all of our images, our audio and the video file. We can see that in the audio portion of it, the Mac file was not imported. So this might be important for you to be aware of. So whenever it is that you're working with an audio file, it should have a Windows format for it to be included into Camtasia. Very well, once that I have done this, I am going to save the project and I am going to save it with the name of multiple tracks. Very well, now I can go back to my folder. I can see once again that all of my media files have been included and now there's a brand new editing file, Camtasia project file, with 7 kilobytes. Very well, I'm going to start doing some basic manipulations of my video file and the main purpose of this is just to show you what is possible. I don't have something in mind that I want to create. I want to mostly show you how the program operates when you want to integrate different media files. So the very first thing that I would like to do is to bring this one to the timeline, as we have done in other parts of this lesson. And once that it's in my timeline, I can start doing adjustments here and there. One of the things that we have learned how to do fairly quickly is to place the head somewhere and to select an area and to delete it. 
so I will not cover that part anymore. Nonetheless, it might be the case that you want to move things around once that you have done your recording. And for that you can do things like this. You can come to an empty area that you would like to designate as the place where you can cut the split to take place. There it is. Then I'm going to come over here and I am going to do another split after selecting both files again. Now that I have done this, I can pretty much select the audio track, the system audio track from the computer and delete it since anyhow it doesn't have any audio. And then I can detach this from its sequence and change the order in which things happen. So I can move this around, I can select these two, click and drag them to the left and now I have this part floating around and if I were to insert it somewhere I can come over here create another split by selecting the tracks that I want to split drag this out and then bring this part back in I have not really paid attention to what it is specifically what I'm cutting because my purpose in this tutorial is just to show you that you can manipulate sections of your video in this way, in a way in which you can isolate it and move it and place it elsewhere. Now the next part is related to including another video and we can easily incorporate another Camtasia recording at the very end here but just to show you that you can incorporate different types of media files I am going to grab a time-lapse video and I'm gonna place it over here in other words Camtasia is gonna allow you to edit your screen captures and then also incorporate actual photographic video into your production. Now one of the things that you can notice is that the dimensions of the image, the dimensions of this video that we recorded over here is different from the dimensions of this video that I incorporated there. You can notice quite well because there is some extra area over here at the top and there's some extra area at the bottom. So in this case probably it would work well. There's essentially nothing really to lose by having that black area there but there's a possibility to make a modification to make that black area go away and includes increasing the size of this video. So I am going to shrink to 50% so I can have a little bit of extra room around and I am going to grab one of the corners and I'm going to extend it. Now my video is going from side to side. I am covering the previous two black areas but now I'm losing a little bit of the sides on the left and on the right. And that is up to you to decide if that will work for your production or not. Once that you have done that the video is going to play covering the entire area. In the same way, if you would like to show a screen capture and your purpose is to show a video in a smaller section of the screen, that is also possible. So let me show you what I mean with that. I just deleted the video that I incorporated at the end. I'm going to return the timeline to the beginning of the lesson and I am going to choose to bring my video of photographic quality here. Now what it's important to know is that when I move in this direction these different tracks are gonna act as if they were on top of each other. Imagine sheets of paper and this is the bottom sheet, second sheet, third sheet and so on. So as we move forward in these tracks, in these layers, Basically what we are doing is we're placing things on top and the bottom ones are going to disappear. Let me show you an example. As soon as I move into the photographic video, the video is going to be there. I'm going to once again reduce its size a little. There we go. 
And now you can see the top of the browser window here and the bottom of the browser window here. And basically what is happening is that as we add those different tracks, they're going to be overlaying each other. So you can do the same trick as to minimize the size of these for you to be able to operate well. And then I am going to grab the corner and then I am going to bring it down. There we go. Now, it could be the possibility that you don't want the video to appear there and it would be a good idea to have the video appear within the context of your recording and therefore you can place it there. And you can have both things running simultaneously. I don't know in what instances this might be appropriate, but this is a tool and an option that you have if you want to head in this direction. And as you play the video browser, and basically what you're looking at is a visual representation of Google News. So what you find in the standard version. So the video will remain there and your screen recording will be underneath that. In the same way that we have added different layers for different recordings, now we're going to add an audio file. And this is, for example, if you would like to have um, a small fading music before your video starts. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to put it over here. As you keep on adding files to your production, the number of tracks will keep on increasing. I would recommend to use your judgment and not to include too many tracks because at some moment the program starts struggling with all the information that it has to juggle at the same time. So while this is a way to create videos, I will not rely on these as the main means to create videos. And I would be careful not to go above a certain number of tracks. And that is depending on the power of the computer that you're using for the editing process. So this is a fairly long track. So now that it's selected, I am going to grab up to here. I'm just choosing any point whimsically and I'm going to split it. And then I'm going to grab this area and I am going to delete it. So I have my introduction audio ready to go. Now, if I'm going to have an introduction audio over here, it might be a good idea for me to lock that out, select the beginning part of my recording, probably something like that. These are 10 seconds. It might be too long for an intro. It might be good there. Audio insert the silence and now that I have inserted the silence there I can come over here unlock that lock those other ones increase this area up to here a little bit more than my cut and now I'm gonna request a fade in as you can see Camtasia automatically creates a behavior that is going to slowly rise the volume of your recording um, and then is going to remain constant at this point. Now, it might be a good idea not to have this going throughout the entire video. Music can be quite distracting. So I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to do a very long fade out. There we go. So let's have a little look at how this would sound. That is a visual representation of Google News. So what you find in the standard versions of Google News is what you will find also in the news map. Now let's expand this once again and as you can see, the music is a little bit high and I can manually select these two and decide to lower the volume. That is a visual representation of Google News. So what you find in the standard versions of Google News is very well. In that way, you can keep on adding images. Now that we have added all of this information, all these cuts, I have added things here and there, I have added a fade in. I would like to go back and take a good look at the size of my media files. 
let's save the Camtasia project and there we go as you can see my media files have not changed size at all they remain exactly as they were when I started the project however what has changed in size is the Camtasia project file this file over here it used to be 7 kilobytes big now it is 119 why this file has increased well basically has all this information about all these editing choices and it is not really affecting the media itself it is just information about how that media has to be constructed at the time of exporting it or rendering it very well I'm gonna do one more file which is an image file and I am gonna bring it here go into the bin I'm gonna grab the hype cycle from Wikimedia and I'm gonna place it there now it happens the same as it happened in the placement of the video and I need to do some adjustments to that image for it to fill the entire screen unless I want it to appear like this but that was not my real intention so I'm gonna come to this upper left part and now I'm gonna expand that image to fill the entire screen and there it goes now whenever you include a file in your Camtasia recording it's gonna last approximately five seconds but it's very easy for you to just grab one of the edges and increase its length to whatever length you think it's necessary so I'm gonna increase it that much and then some of the usual behavior that you can do in videos you can also do with images so for example I am going to zoom in at this moment and I am going to get close to the mass media hype begins I want to center on that there so whenever that image appears we will have a similar zooming in behavior you can opt to move these later on over here That is a visual representation of and there you go so basically you can bring images into Camtasia and then use that image to zoom in and zoom out as you need it very well one last look into how all of these happen in terms of our files and now we notice that it increased an extra two kilobytes let's save our project again now we can see that it increased a lot more all the way to 133 kilobytes and that's because it has not only the information of where this image starts and ends but also has this information about the zooming behavior so I hope that this makes sense as you work in your projects this file is going to increase size and size and, and, and it's going to become fairly large but always within reason always like maximum 10 megabytes and it's going to be a very different size than your heavy media which is audio and video so it is very important that as you move forward in your project and you keep on doing this editing process that you save multiple times your Camtasia Studio project because this file is the one that has all the editing processes if you lose this file and you keep only the media there's nothing really to do but to start again uh, nothing has been done to the media itself everything has been collected there very well let's move to the next part